When five minutes is a long time in simulation. This is another in the series focused on early stage environmental control explorations. You can find out more about strategies for exploring control issues at the link shown below. Simulation folk don't like watching paint dry. For many, whole building simulation was and still is an hourly annual ritual. For others, well, 15 minutes is the new normal. And, and there are some radical folk that go for higher frequencies. Our choice of time step, if we think much about it, probably based on beliefs about the response characteristics of the building facade itself. These beliefs can play havoc with environmental controls where 15 minutes or even 5 minutes is a very long time indeed. In this video, we sneak into territory where control engineers have been spotted in the wild. I have a comfort zone in, for environmental controls that I use in my workflow. Moving outside of that comfort zone, I've tripped up quite a few times because, well, I'm not a control engineer. And simulation folk using other tools will probably also recognize the twisted ankles as well as the big takeaways that happen when you go off piste. So let's start with the elephants in the room. First, the sensors, control logic, and components of environmental controls tend to respond a lot quicker than building facade. And second, the march of time within simulation tools includes fixed points where we know the thermophysical state of everything, and then there are all the other in-between times where, well, we don't know very much. And that leads to the first big question. What does control logic, which expects a continuous stream of information, do with all those in-between moments? And the following on question is, well, what happens if we deviate from these devices' sense of time in our choice of simulation time steps? Developers invent lots of numerical workarounds for these vastly different time frames. However, the phrase, just because it doesn't crash, doesn't mean it produces a good rendering of the environmental control. Well, we ought to remember that phrase. And in this video, we're looking at the use of simulation at early stages of design. This is a time when folk are especially keen not to watch paint dry, and so we'll tend to move to longer time steps. Writers of user manuals and pop-up help messages don't necessarily mention all of the tricks of the trade. So in this video, we will also look at the foibles found in early stage control exploration. Does it do what it says on the tin? Determining if some simulation facility does what it says on the tin is one of those tasks that seem to fit into the general definition of best practice. And our tools don't always make the process easy. How many times do we get presented by a list of very opaque choices? What is a three-position controller anyway? 20 pages down a Google search? Ah, here's the term mentioned in a SIBSI guide. Wow, it's got an impressive number of attributes. But how do I populate that list of attributes? And say a controller has an attribute labeled deadband. Does it do what I think it does? How would I confirm that my digital twin is a reasonable rendering? Let's explore. In our dozen office training model, we have rooms with a mix of ideal controls. Each office is the same, except for the control logic being imposed. Let's start our exploration with finding a compromise between simulation resources and a controller's need for continuous feedback. One of the usual suspects would be environmental controls that have fixed capacities for heat injection or extraction. These are often linked to some sort of on-off control logic. A simple example of this is an electric oil-filled radiator. It typically injects a fixed magnitude based on the response of a, well, usually very cheap internal on-off thermostat. This fits nicely in with a fixed injection or extraction kind of control. And you really can't get much simpler than this. In each of the periods that are defined, there is a capacity for heating and for cooling, and a set point for heating and cooling. But also, that control assumes that the thermostat will switch at the set point whether the room temperature is rising or falling, 
and that it will not be overly influenced by its own hot surfaces, which might be rather optimistic. Let's say we monitored such a device and mapped out its actual response to changing room conditions. Given these, we then have an option for a much more specific control law to discover how room conditions might differ from that initial optimistic assumption. And thus, we might move to the separate on-off controller. Why would we bother? Well, it's the virtual equivalent of commissioning. We can use virtual commissioning to explore whether we can add offsets to a building energy management system to adapt to the specific characteristics of the kit to be installed. Let's look at another. Many devices have a duty cycle. They must run for, say, a minimum period of time or be in an off state for a minimum period of time in order to function. Before we invest time in the details, it would be good to know if the rooms associated with such a system would remain comfortable in such a switching regime. ESP offers such a controller, and here are its attributes. Many devices offer staged deployment of heating and cooling. Would such a pattern result in better control or comfort in a room? Again, ESPR offers a low attribute controller for such explorations. So in our model, we want to maintain between 20 and 24 degrees during office hours and between 16 and 26 degrees at other times. To explore the impact of different simulation time steps, in ESP we've set up a number of simulation parameter sets, each of which uh, provides a set of attributes to apply to the simulation as it runs. So let's go into the simulation facility. And here are our various presets. We have winter at five minutes and two minutes, spring at 15 minutes, which as for the people that really don't want to watch the paint fly. And so let's start with that one. This March period has quite a few different conditions happening over time. So it will be a challenge for the control in this model. And let's monitor progress. We'll get the base case room as well as the multi-stage room, the on-off, the uh, fixed and the time proportioning controls. And there's the temperature. We'll monitor as it progresses. So this is with the 15 minute time step. So in real time, this is Yep, there we go. Okay. There are the various temperatures inside and save the results. That took 18 seconds. Now, so that's saved. What I'd like to do is just for comparison, let's pick the spring five minute time step and run through the same. So, oh, and with a five minute time step. Yes, it's going somewhat slower. Now, in this case, there's a lot less deviation between the various um, different control laws which is as expected. We're getting closer to their sense of time, and that took us 52 seconds. And lastly, we'll run it for uh, a two minute time step.
and for the two minute time step. Again, it's slower. The file it's creating is going to be rather larger. And here's the feedback again. Perhaps there's a slight improvement on the switching of the various controls, but really we're going to need to go and look into the results analysis to determine. Let's look at the predictions for this super sticky control context between the base case ideal controller, which gives us exactly what we want, and the simple fixed injection. Well, this shouldn't be a surprise. It's only every 15 minutes that the inbuilt thermostat gets to find out whether it has done its job or if it needs to inject more heat into the room. We get temperature swings as it keeps dumping in heat or delays turning on until the next increment of the simulation time arrives. The overshoot is often so bad that it kicks on the cooling. In the case of a control with separate on and off settings for the heating and cooling, it's even worse. The room is well on its way to overheating by the time it kicks in and it simply can't recover with the available cooling capacity. So rather than look at the horrific graphs for the other control types I've described, let's look at a table of heating and cooling demands over the week. And it shows massive differences in the kilowatt hours, primarily because of the sticky feedback situation and the ratcheting between heating and cooling. If there was an actual environmental control with such a poor feedback situation, yep, it would also run riot with the inside conditions. Switching to the five minute time step, which took a little bit longer, but let's look at the predictions and we're doing so much better. If we compare the base case ideal controller, which gives us exactly what we need versus the fixed injection and extraction controller, we see that there's a much closer temperature match between those two. And more importantly, we are not thrashing back and forth between the heating and cooling. So vast improvement. If we move on to the control where we set the on and off situation for the rise and fall of an actual device, again, we see that with a five minute time step, we're doing much better. We pick up the uh, potential overheating early enough to do something about it. We see very little in the way of thrashing back and forth. Moving on to the multi-stage controller, temperature control, which is very close to the ideal. And we can see that the multi-stage controller is coming in in stages at various times. So that seems like the room will be able to cope with that kind of situation quite well. And how about our exploration of a controller where there is a duty cycle involved, but I think this would be one for a control engineer to be playing around with. But it seems to be that the room would cope with such situations reasonably well. And what about energy demands over time? Well, this table seems to indicate that there's much less difference between the various schemes. That also confirms that a five minute time step is a considerable improvement. Moving to a two minute time step, well, we do get a minor increment in improvement, tracking better, fewer differences in the energy demand over time, but not sufficient to change the storyline or the design choice.